Hey what guys, what's going yeah. on? Alright, so tell me what's going on. Why we are here? So uh, we're the team behind the Anchor project, which is nominated to get a Webby award. Uh, so George, uh, who was the lead designer on this, decided let's do a quick video on some of the comps that we've done, uh, some of the process screens, um, and we can share our work uh, with you guys. Uh, so my name is Radosh, and I was working closely with the team. And with me, I have Yue. Hi, I'm Yue. I'm the lead UX designer for these projects. Super excited to share the progress with you guys. Awesome. And George, need to flip the face cam. Hi, this is George. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Alright guys, so we're here to talk about Amper, uh, which has been selected uh, for Webby Awards. Um, so Amper is an AI-based uh, music composer. Uh, essentially what it does for you is that you can select certain moods and genres, and based on that, it will the AI engine will create music custom that you can tweak uh, into, the, into the composer. Um, so that's the actual project itself. Uh, what you see on the screen right now is not uh, is something that we've built. Um, and then with me, I have George and Yue. So we'll kind of walk through just briefly about the process and show you some of the screens that we have in there. Because uh, Amper is still in private beta. Uh, so if you guys have signed up for it, hopefully you got your accounts. But you, if you have not, then at least you can see it on our screens right now. Cool. So let's start with what Amper originally came to us with, right? Um, so when the client came in, this is what they had presented to us and said, like, look, we have this amazing AI engine that can create some amazing music, um, but the UI is not there, right? It was a little bit overly complicated. This was more of, uh, this was the only screen that they had in there at the time. So if you logged in, uh, you were kind of presented with the screen. So it wasn't really meant for the average user who was, you know, who didn't know how to use these complicated tools. Uh, and then UA out here uh, together with the client we kind of came up with a system where why don't we make something that's super simple for the end users where they can just in one click create any soundtrack for their personal songs or anything in there so it's like a simple composer and then we can always go into the advanced view which has all these amazing features to kind of really tweak the music to their liking for their tracks uh, so we ended up taking uh, a two-step approach one is a simple viewer to create simple tracks in there and then the other one is for more professionals who want to create and you know tweak the music change the instruments uh, and have a lot more control uh, on the end uh, song that they're going to create um, all right so what i'm going to do is start out here um, and this is just some basic uh, ux that we kind of put together um, so you can already see out here you know we start asking the end user hey, you know, here's some music types in there. You can describe the mood and the style of the music you want in here. Uh, and then again, go into a real simple view, right? So basically you make a few selections and the idea was that you would get the simple track in here. Uh, oops. Uh, so you can see out here what we've done is created a simple and a professional uh, uh, view. So in the simple view, this is where you are right now. You have a simple track in here. You can download the track, you can refresh it, and right out here you can make some tweaks and edits to it. And if you go into the professional view, you get the full thing in there. Uh, so you really want to talk a little bit about this uh, professional view? Yes, so um, on top of that, um, we start with the focus group interview, right? We define there are two different types of users. One is uh, just want to get out the music quick uh, and not want to spend time to figure out how to do the advanced uh, editing. So the, uh, the application should give them an like, easy way to get in, get out, and smart enough to understand what they're looking for. So basically, it's just what photos show you here. Uh, simple, really simple, three clicks, ask you what type of uh, music you're looking for and how long was the music, and start to generate right for you. If, if you feel this one is not correct, you click refresh, and that will generate another one until it's learned more and more. On, on, uh, the system learn more on, and more based on your behavior, understand you. Uh, that's how we call the machine learning to generate a more accurate soundtrack for you. So that's a simple mode. But then we know that when people uh, more work at a professional, we need to give them the capability to do. Uh, advanced 
editing, which is we provide uh, a tons of like music effect and a set chart, which is we're gonna show you in a second. So cool. that's a simple move. Awesome. So uh, once UA started working together with George out here, uh, who's the design lead on it, uh, they were working very closely uh, on the UX and design for it. So I'm gonna go into I think some explorations. Is that the screen? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I don't think so. It, maybe the first exploration. The original. Uh, oh, there you go. Design exploration. Yeah, exactly. So the first, uh, the first pass, kind of. All right. And the first, the initial ideas. So. The, f the first day that uh, I went to George's computer to say like, hey, show me some work in progress, uh, this is what he had, you know. Uh, so he has started doing some explorations on what the waveform could be like, uh, how you can make it more interesting. Uh, as you can see out here, some very different explorations, uh, one with a dark interface. And we kind of went and saw what would happen if you had, let's say, a more lighter interface. Uh, obviously. We went with the darker interface because it looks really cool. Uh, and these are just some initial explorations out here on how the wave transformations can work when you're adding either filters, you're adding a whole bunch of different effects to it as well uh, to make it really kind of like cool and awesome and engaging. Uh, George, you want to talk about the body with the process? Yeah, maybe just a couple of words about how the interface was built and how I approached this task. So I started with the waveform because the wave uh, is the most important thing in this interface, obviously in the, uh, the music itself. And uh, so we we built we kind of built the interface around the wave. And since the wave is the most important, so uh, we put a little bit more effort than uh, usually uh, to this part. So we 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 have here a couple of ideas how we can how we can make wave. Uh, to be um, meaningful. Usually, if you look at, at the wave, you just everything what you can to, uh, tell is just how loud the music is. So here we try to treat it differently. We put different layer, layers on top of each other, and each layers represent different um, instrument. Uh, so you can you can select uh, the wave, or you can select uh, the different the instrument, and then you can see how loud is this in instrument at this particular uh, spot, and. Uh, this way, we try to do it to do the wave more usable, uh, and then so we tested it in the design. We built, we, as I said before, we just tried to reduce as much as possible like graphic noise. We just build interface around, um, you know, uh, different uh, variations of it. But then we 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 show it to the client, and then we get our first feedback. And based on the feedback, we started changing things, right? So yeah. and then let's, let's, <laughs> let's show, let's show the, the, next, uh, the next one. Okay. All right. So we go right here. So this is essentially creating the new track, right? Um, so this is what we've been... This is final design already. Yeah. Um, but again, this is more for like how you kind of go into selecting your music, which is you know, describing your mood. So in order for the AI engine to kind of understand on how to create the music, you have to decide the length of the, the audio clip, like Yue said, uh, the mood. So out here you can say reflective, driving, exciting, happy, sad. Um, and then as you kind of go into it, you have to define a style as well. Uh, so when we launched it, there were only four styles, but there's a lot more in there right now. So you can go from classic rock to modern folk, corporate pop, cinematic. So if you're creating any, any kind of TV ads, any kind of like small uh, short videos as well, or short movies, it's a great tool to use for that to create some nice, awesome cinematic uh, tra tracks. Um, cool. So here we're just kind of going through the entire process, right? So you click modern folk, what you need in there, classic rock. Uh, and then this is basically your library out here. So you already have a whole bunch of uh, uh, audio files already existing. And we also have the capability of adding your video. So if you just did a quick shot with your iPhone, you can put that video in there and you can compose music for it. So it's really awesome. Uh, so th that's where we were uh, discussing, like, you know, this could be a tool even more from just music professionals. Right. It can be tools for like, you know, agencies like ourselves. When we are creating videos for our clients, maybe we don't have to go and purchase now uh, really expensive soundtracks for those uh, songs and we can just compose our own up here. Exactly, especially uh, Amphor create allow you to create 
original soundtrack, so you don't need to really download like a uh, music library and find the same. Always use the same soundtrack for every project. So this is how awesome it is. Cool. And then here's just and a you don't quick... have to worry about copyrights. It's also important. So <laughs> oh, each track is unique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I, unless you copyright your own tracks, then right? So, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> this yeah, is it's AI based. Everything should be unique. Right. <laughs> uh, so right from here, you have my composition, right? And you create a new one. And because you chose as a simple track, you go into this uh, view. So again, out here. You select three things, you get your soundtrack already done, you can download it right here, you can listen to it, uh, you can of course rate it, uh, and the cool thing is even if you make some changes out here, like simple instruments you can remove and add to it, you can always go to the pro mode and like really customize your soundtrack. Another quick thing I wanted to mention is mm -hmm. uh, again about the interface, but we, uh, Wei and I we decided to remove the traditional navigation, so you Basically, you don't have any navigation. It's just two pages uh, interface. Um, yeah. Right? Uh, on top of that, something I want to explain a little bit more. It's you see this um, thumbs up button on the bottom. These buttons are actually uh, the beauty and the smart to trigger the artificial intelligence. Once you every time you uh, generate new music, uh, that's how uh, the system understand if you like this music or not, or something they might. Uh, bring uh, the same instruments and same mood back again if you like this soundtrack. So when you stay with this application longer and longer, uh, they recognize you. Cool. Good point, actually. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right. Let's go into the next comp that George has prepared for us. Uh, all right. I think is so. It, this is the still the simple view out here. Uh, we will go through this a little bit faster. So even in the simple view, you wanted to give the users the ability to kind of edit uh, at least the instruments. So out here, you can see you're in the editing view. You can again edit the mood and style, uh, the instrumentation, which means what other instruments have been used on it, the tempo and the beat of it. So if you want to move it faster, a little bit slower, and again, the duration of the clip as well. So just some simple editing options for the simple version as well. Uh, and you can see out here, if you click on instrumentation, it shows you have the bass, the guitar, and the drum kit, and then you can add, let's say, keys to it, or another synth to it, uh, or you can even randomize, let's say, the bass or the guitar that's already been playing out here. So you can see you have three instruments selected for the simple form, and then you have three instruments out here, uh, which is Joe's Rock Band. Uh, cool. And then, of course, the other controls are pretty straightforward. You know, you have tempo and duration in there. Um, the, the one thing about uh, the UI uh, that's kind of challenging from a technology perspective is that it wasn't instantaneous because the entire AI engine is in the cloud. So every time you make a change, you kind of have to apply the change and then the AI engine will recreate the entire track, uh, which is always great because it understands what you're looking for, it tweaks it, and then it creates a new track for you every time. So it's always custom uh, whatever you're creating. Uh, so you're never gonna get, you're never gonna ever, ever get the same two soundtracks uh, ever uh, because of the AI engine and how it works. Um, I think those are more almost everything from the simple view. So I think maybe we should go now into the more detail of the. Uh, just go to the pro version. The Here's pro the, version. Here the. It shows how how pro. you switch to the pro. Yeah. But I think you can just go to the pro. Okay. okay. Let's just go to the pro. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Uh, cool. So let's zoom into this stuff. So as you can see, compared to the first interface, we've even simplified. So all the features that you saw in that overly complicated interface, uh, which look almost like Logic Pro uh, to a certain degree, we've kind of simplified them because again, this is not this is not Logic Pro. This is not GarageBand. You don't need all those controls in there to create music. This is a platform that creates the music for you from an AI. Based uh, from from an AI perspective, and then you can tweak it, right? So that was the whole point of it: is to simplify the entire interface, uh, but yet give them those professional controls that they're uh, used to. It. Um, so George, why don't you walk through the pro version? Um, okay, uh, you have more um, instruments here. You can uh, edit the duration uh, right right from here. Mm -hmm. You can add transition. You can add even accents, which is pretty cool. So if you if you if you have a video 
and on this on on the third second you you have a spike or something like that or some mo most important you know piece of video you want to add an accent on this place on, and then the the render again and then the music will be created this way that right here it will be spiking the music right um, you can also add a you can also add a video right away and you will see also here underneath you will see the original soundtrack from the video uh, you will see the, the video itself and you can play and play the video and the music at the same time just to, to make sure everything is matching um, here actually a lot a lot of comps like as you can see for each different scenario you can uh, you can also I'm gonna make everyone busy. <laughs> so the idea here is also that oops, and I know George is gonna make all of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna stay on this one screen for now. Uh, so the idea out here is like again, you can create these different tracks and then you can kind of like shift them around the timeline, right? So right here you can see that you have a track which is classic rock. Right, but it's a different mood in there. And then, if you want to transition from one mood to the other, you can create another track. You know, have happy as the genre and classic rock, uh, and then have another one out here. And then, of course, in these gaps, as Joe said, that you know, you can simply come in here, add another track in these kind of gaps, and again, you can change the genre of the music and also the mood for it, and it'll transition between these genres and uh, music moods. So you can actually create these amazing uh, soundtracks. Uh, just by like clicking into it, you know, refreshing it, changing the instruments out there, uh, and then you know, also uh, figuring out where you want the transitions to be. So there's a lot of professional controls that you can give to these tracks, right? Um, another cool thing is you know you can uh, there's a button out here which is called match. So for example, let's say you like two tracks, but you like something from one and you want to match it to the other. So you can kind of say, hey, I want to match uh, instruments, or I want to match some genre. And that's uh, viewable as well. Yeah. Cool. Right. So, uh, oh, go ahead, Yue. Yeah. So um, you see how beauty is the interface for professional compared to sim uh, the simple version. I mean, we work closely with Emperor Music, and also really everything when we come out, we ask the uh, company to to go out to test. We help them, we guide them to understand what user really need. We went through interviews. Uh, so that makes sure every piece of features and the UI align what user need here. So you can see uh, like this view here, we show you the timeline, we show how uh, specifically you can zoom in, zoom out the soundtrack. All, all these features, uh, uh, we, 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 we hear the feedback from uh, user and user directly. Cool. Awesome. Uh, all right, then continuing down. Oh, is that it? I'll be careful about this. I don't know what George did. He froze everything. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so uh, we also like worked on the animation. So for example, every time, like as I mentioned, that you make these changes, you kind of have to go in and say, render the music. Uh, so there's always a little bit of a lag time between your changes, but I know the guys at Amper are working super hard to kind of really minimize this lag time in there. But we again kind of created this nice little UI wave in there, which is a bit AI based, that kind of shows how the AI is thinking right. and then creating music for you. Uh, cool, so these are, these are again, like uh, Joel said, with Just the video states. being here, just some different tracks and different states in there. Cool. Uh, what else do we have out here? What's the next screen, George? Yeah, that's the edition. How, how to edit the different edition uh, opportunities. Oh, okay. Uh, it's pretty yeah. complex as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we won't go through all the complexities out here, but as uh, George mentioned out here, you know, again, you can change the mood and style, the instrumentation for these ones out here. Um, you can see the different tracks and the accents, right? Uh, and also we have these nice little indicators out here. So it says that you made some changes to track or two, but you still have to render the track to kind of listen to the changes in there. Uh, and then going in here, accents that you can have in here as well. I kind of want to show, uh, do we have transitions in here somewhere? And how that works? Somewhere, yeah. Somewhere, okay. <laughs> uh, cool, so here it is. So uh, essentially you can also add transitions to each track. Uh, and transitions by default uh, are always at the end. So you want to kind of understand how, you know, maybe you want to have a soft fade towards the end of the track. So you kind of add the transition bar 
the kind of transition you want to have, and then exactly where you want to have it. And it's all done within this one track UI, right? So we don't have like multiple like uh, defined levels in there. We create, made it quite intuitive for end users to be like, hey, here's your track, here's how you had accents, here's your transitions, and you can all visualize it in this one view up here itself. Um, great, and then again, like I mentioned, like a whole bunch of tons of features that we added. You can kind of go in here and see all the different sequences. You can go do edits and history for it as well. Uh, but yeah, I think this should give everyone a good idea as to what the whole app is. Um, yeah. And then I'm gonna go into, what is this one? This is just the responsive rules to show how, uh, how responsive it yeah. is. And also maybe the style guide is right. being oh. I'll let you talk about the style guide because this is what the developers need as well. <laughs> I don't know. Go for it. Uh, every project we finish with a uh, very detailed style guide when we show the behavior of all elements, how to use typography, and also like alternative typography if we can use this one for some reason. Um, the iconography, uh, the buttons, and all the states. Who did the icons? You did the icons? Huh? I did the icons, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, also, like the, the small interaction ideas of changing tempo, for example, when you can just uh, rotate the wheel, the left and right, or you can start typing here and type something uh, specific. And yes, this is the, those small animations are also very really thought out uh, and sent to development. Uh, yeah, I mean. It, it's a style guide in the end, so yeah. Yes, it's a style guide in the end. Uh, but it's interesting that how, how we uh, pay attention on each details and even your profile, uh, which looks nice. And uh, also different uh, rules, how the accents works, what happens if you have two accents next to each other, how the colors match, uh, and also like different variations for the waves colors. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it, right? Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, so, hope you guys enjoy the video walkthrough. Joe said he's going to take this whole thing and edit it uh, <laughs> After Effects. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do in terms some of After 3D. Effects. Some uh, 3D. <laughs> and also he's going to take some music from Amper and add it right as a background soundtrack. Yeah. So that'd uh, be cool. Yeah. Uh, and then once he sends it to me, I'll upload it, and then you guys can all watch it. Uh, but we hope you go on Webby and work for us. It's an awesome project. And also go onto AmperMusic.com and sign up. All right, I think that's it for me. Yeah. yeah.